Alright, all my Detroit Piston fans and all my Detroit fans, all my Motor City Sports Talk fans, make sure you guys go check out Piston Mike. We got him over 100 followers, so make sure you check him out. Everything Pistons, man, he gonna hold it down and do his thing just strictly on the Pistons thing. You know, I got the lines of Pistons, but man, we always trying to help people get their channel up. Let's get him to 200 next, 300 next, 400 next, 500 next, and let's get him all the way to a rack so he can start making that bag. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you go over to Piston Mike as you see it on the screen. Let's get him to 200, then 300, then 400, then 500, and the whole shebang. Peace. All right, man. Sound like the Pistons are strongly considering rumors, strongly considering drafting um, Jalen Green. Most people think it's a shoe in. K Cunningham, K Cunningham, K Cunningham. Let's talk about the, the G League hurt. Jalen Green being the number one pick. All right. Um, it's apples to apples. I think K Cunningham is a great fit. I think Green is a great fit. All right. I think Green is the better fit. But you know, look at K. It really don't matter to me. I think I switched my mind to K because. A lot of reasons I talk about it, but, um, you know, people say KK, but there's been a lot of times where, where guys have been surefire number one picks, and it hasn't worked out. Check out the Detroit Pistons Talk playlist, share the video, best way to help out the channel is uh, thumbs up the video if you haven't subscribed, all right? There's been a whole bunch of number one picks that ain't really panned out. You look at Elm Brand, great player, Okay. Steve Francis, Baron Davis, Lamar Odom was just as good. Rip Hamilton in there. Jason Terry, Sean Marius, the 91 drive. Uh, Ron Artest, Corey Maggetti. All right. Um, Devin George, Andre Kirilenko was in that draft. Okay. Jermaine Jones was in it. Calvin Booth in the second round. So, I mean, it's just been a situation where, you know, oh, this guy number one. Every number one pick ain't LeBron. You look at, you know, Kenyon Martin probably was the best player in that draft, bar none. I don't really think it's nobody you really can uh, argue with, but, you know, you go to 01. Okay, not Kwame Brown. Shout out to Kwame, though. You know, um, y'all mean, it's a lot of guys in this draft, but uh, that's another draft that pretty much worked out. Um, LeBron James, 03. Dwight Howard, 04. 05, Andrew Bogut. Chris Paul is the best player in that draft, so... <laughs> It's really, when you're talking about surefire number one picks, it's hard. It's hard to say because one thing, you got to talk about fit, coaching staff, you know. Like Darko Milicic, you can talk about him. People say, well, Darko, well, shit, maybe, you know, him not playing early, not having a role early hurt his confidence. And I think it did hurt his confidence, not playing early and, you know, um, excuse me, not playing early. And how confidence in that You know I mean? Trade for Sheed that year, and it didn't work out. So, I mean, people got to understand, man. Fit, situation, all all that playing time, the coach, the coaching staff, people that raised, that uh, helped raise these, these young guys. And today, really, you don't have that veteran leadership no more, especially the Pistons. Trade away Andre, Blake, and Derrick Rose. Remember, you got to have... The right, it's like it's like a flower. You gotta have the right situation for flowers. Some flowers don't need that much light. Some flowers need to be outside. Some flowers are indoor flowers. That you gotta understand. It's just because if we take Caden and Jalen Green turn out to be better than him, maybe it was situation. You know, you can't say we took Kate, we took Jalen Green. We took Jalen Green. He would have been maybe not. And the Pistons have a long history of. I, I won't even say. I wouldn't put go far, but I think you could say this development talent, and it and it blo and it blossoms elsewhere. It's a long history of that. It's a long history of them. Chris Middleton, Spencer did with the Aaron Aflalo, or you know somebody sitting on the bench and then they use them in desperation, like Tayshawn Prince, and you find out you got some. The Pistons been operating other than injury of recent. The Pistons been operating like it's nineteen eighty. 1975, every year, all the way back to the Bad Boy Pistons. When you got a special talent that's number two like Darko or, you know, even if it's a second round like Chris Middleton or Spencer Dewey, you got to throw them out there and play. Especially if you ain't, you ain't really one of us since 04, 05. That's always been my biggest gripe. Throw them out there. That motherfucker's been having the top 10 pick for years. And refuse to play. And then when they do play guys, they not you be like, well, why didn't you play this guy, that guy? So you gotta understand 
just because you take K Cunningham and Green better, it doesn't mean Green would have been better than K Cunningham in this situation, if y'all get what I'm saying. The Pistons have to create a situation where it doesn't happen to Tayshawn and Flalo, Rodney White. I mean, you keep going on. It, it, it has to be a situation where somebody got to learn by fire. Somebody got to be good, be good enough to go in there and play. And historically, that's not been the case. They play Reggie Jackson, Villanueva, Ben Gordon, Josh Smith over players, and you don't go nowhere. You would think when they, like, in the 82-game season, they 20 wins with two with 20 more to go, you know, you the bottom of the Eastern Conference, why not put in Prince, Dewitty, all those guys? It just to me, they were better. They was better. They was they was better off being the LA Rams of the NBA. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right now LA Rams. Sorry, my damn beer did you? You know where the LA Rams take as, uh, draft assets and turn them to veteran players? Why not? Why not take trade three number ones for for you know for for a potential star? Or a star. That's how they've been operating. The only reason Isaiah Stewart and uh, St uh Sadiq Bay got in because guys, guys was hurt. Guys got traded. Guys got waived. The only way Saban leave, we seen that he worth something that Derrick Rose got traded, got injured. And that's the issue. It shouldn't come to injury. At some point, you got to play the young guys. You got to embrace the tank. And for years, up to this point, to this point, they never embraced the tank. They played Blake Griffin a thousand minutes. They played. Derrick Rose, Drummond, Monroe, everybody else a thousand minutes. And that's why talent developed elsewhere, and it's been happening like that for years. You know, in football, you drop in the first round, you know, you gonna you probably gonna start. You know, if you the bet if you come in, if you you know, we've seen every time. You know, guys like Darius Leonard coming to the league in training camp, he proves that, you know what, I'm probably the best linebacker on the Indianapolis Colts. Guess what? He get to play in, in, in a maximized role, and he was a, a second-round pick. You know, and you, you go on to other people. You talking about John Randall. He, you know, he was undrafted, if my memory serves me correctly. He is one of the greatest, you know, interior linemen that there is. Out of, out of Texas and um, Kingsville, you know, I believe he went undrafted. Yeah, he went undrafted in 1990. At 287 pounds, <laughs> part of Sack Club, 100th anniversary NFL team, 90s decade, NFL sack leader in 96, I mean 97, six-time first-team All-Pro, 93-98. Seven, come on. The best player should play, and the best player in this situation should be drafted. And then if they both equal on your board, then you talk about fifth need. But you want to talk about Jalen Green, great player. Okay, really great player, you know, and it wouldn't be, you know, it it wouldn't be ugly unless it was a situation like Derrick Rose and what was old boy, uh, the year Derrick Rose came, what was old boy name? He didn't do anything in the league. He didn't do anything in the league. What was old boy's name? Uh, uh what was old boy's name? Uh, my, not, yeah, Michael Beasley, but it was another year. My bad. It was another year where Derek something he went to Minnesota and didn't know nothing. But like Michael Beasley, you know, um, he didn't do nothing. So as long as it ain't, if, if it's a Trey Young, Luka Doncic situation, I think everybody be happy. If it's a Michael Beasley, uh, what's so Michael Beasley, Derek Rose gap, a lot of people not gonna be happy. You know what I'm saying? If it's a, a the the beat Blake Griffin gap, John Wall, Evan Turner gap, no, you can't. That's to anybody. Or Kyrie Irving and Derrick Williams, it was. You know, if it's that type of gap, nobody's gonna be happy. But I think Pistons fans can swallow they swallow they pride. And if it's Luka Doncic, well, not even pride, if it's Luka and Trey Young type of gap between Green and Cunningham or Cunningham Green to Mobley to Suggs, I think nobody really be complaining. But as far as uh. As far as him playing the G, of course it hurt. People was in here arguing, so with G League got in the NBA, NBA rejects. But college got a lot of players. You could probably say maybe in the 70, 60, 75, 70, 80 percentile that won't even make it to the NBA. And I said again, college got 70, 80 percent, 80 percent players, maybe even more, maybe give or take, 
that never will play in the NBA. Think about that for a minute. You know, you take you go to the college level, can everybody play in the G League? It's a cutoff. Some people gotta go to France, Greece, Israel, CBA, Chinese, Chinese Basketball Association. People gotta think about that. So the talent level in the G League is better than college. Especially if you think about the rules different. If you put uh, you put your average college team out maybe outside the championship, maybe the champions could even beat the best G Leaguers. You put the you put you put the G Leaguers, best champions in the G League rules, which are NBA rules with the NBA three point line, and you gotta guard people one on one, you can't play a traditional, you gotta play a matchup zone, they're gonna get eight alive. You're gonna get a college level talent that's not deeper than the G League talent. Not top to bottom. Not top to bottom because there's two, you know, it's the rules. Playing the zone and a water break every time. So the only reason it hurt it hurt Jalen Jalen Green is because it hurt him because nobody watched the G League. I didn't even know the night games was coming on ESPN, ESPN two. That's the only reason it hurt him. He didn't have to know the ride. He wasn't on CBS for the for the Final Four in the national championship. Cause think about it. Remember, Villanova won that game, and the dude that hit the shot, he didn't make the lead. The dude that gave him the ball didn't make the lead. If you look, if that Villanova team had a couple guys that made the lead. Remember the Louisville team that beat Michigan in the national championship? They cheated off the uh, Trey Young, Trey Burke file. Uh, I don't think none of them made the lead. Peyton Silva made the lead, but he was right out of there. It doesn't have to know the ride. The G League has not become fashionable, trendy for them to be on ABC, NBC. I mean, Division Two. Traditionally got more prime Division two football. Traditionally got more prime time spots than um in G League. The Texas high school football got more prime time. High school football got more prime time spots in the G League. But I mean, as far as I'm taking K Cunningham, I, I mean, or Jalen Green, as long as the gap ain't sizable. If it's Trey Young and Luca, which I kind of think Trey Young, other than you know Dur- Luca got hurt. Other than this, it's not more than this maybe. You know, and I think it may be a little bit more just because teams, team, people like playing with Trey Young. So as long as the gap ain't Kyrie and Derrick Williams, I think a lot of people would be happy. But I mean, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Reach out anytime. You got business question, quiet response, video requests, all the social media links, description. Twitter's the fastest way, then Facebook, then Instagram. All the links there. Want to make a financial donation? Cash app, CJ Good313. That's in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. Check the trade Piston Talk playlist out. Best way to donate. Thumbs up the video. Share the video if you haven't subscribed. Want to make a financial donation? Cash app, CJ Good313. That's in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. One time for the one time piece.